float with Henry Morgan. A Float with Henry Morgan is an original story written for radio by Warren Barry and a George Edwards production. History contains stories of colorful people, rogues, heroes, kings, and commoners. But there were few who had such a picturesque blood-stained career culminating in honored glory as a man named Morgan in the 17th century. Henry Morgan, pirate, whose foul deeds earned him the name of Colossus of the Caribbean, eventually became Sir Henry Morgan, King's representative, governor of Jamaica. In the Caribbean Sea, the sun at day's end dips like a blazing ball into the ocean, throwing over the sea a dancing pink mantle and over the islands a soft pink glow that blends in with the cool white buildings which stand invitingly midst waving fronds and green foliage. Thus, the spirit of night gives warning of her coming over the British island of Jamaica and the Spanish possession of Cuba. But in Havana, capital of Cuba, inside a large white Moorish type of home, the serenity of the evening is gone. Beside a highly polished cedar desk, white and shaking with rage, stands Don Pietro Pizarro, Spanish governor of Cuba. Before him, hesitant, full of apologies, stands a seaman of high rank. And after losing a ship, you have the effrontery to return here to Havana and face me. I have tried to explain, Don Pietro. It was no fault of mine. No fault of yours that you let a ship laden down with treasure, and part of it, my own treasure, be taken by that pirate, Henry Morgan. It was the will of heaven. Before I left, Excellency, did I not go on my knees and pray that you would let me put more armor on my ships? I had escorts. They were to protect me. And like the blundering fool you are, you get separated from them and allowed yourself to fall prey, defenseless to Henry Morgan. You failed to understand, Don Pietro. You yourself know the nights in the Caribbean are dark when there is no moon. Suddenly, as if from nowhere a storm arises, we hurry to bring in our canvases to make our ship secure. And before we know what has happened, we are scattered to the winds. And then comes the morning. The storm is gone. And in a blaze of glory, the night changes to grey, then flaming red. And a ship is standing nearby. At first sight, I, I give thanks to heaven that I still have one of my escorts to protect me. And then breaks the flag. And I know I am victim to Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan, Henry Morgan, Henry Morgan. Is there no one in the world who will read us of him? Must we always fear the man, Henry Morgan? And uh, those aboard the ship, what of them? Taken by Henry Morgan to Jamaica to be sold as slaves. Then you are lucky, Cortes. My luck depends on your clemency, Excellency. Oh, perhaps it was partly my fault for for not allowing you extra armor to defend yourself. But Cortes, witness this much. I say to you, I pray to heaven for one grant, one gracious gift, to see Henry Morgan in chains in Havana, to have him in the hands of the Inquisition, to see his broken body hanging by the neck in the slave market. That is what I wish from heaven. And with heaven's aid, I will have my wish. Don Pietro's voice shakes with emotion as he sends his prayers heavenwards. And then, with a curt nod, Cortez is dismissed. The governor watches him go, and the heavy cedar doors close on him. But already, Cortez has gone from Don Pietro's mind. There is something else to be faced. The wrath of someone he fears when she is in anger. The loss of his own personal treasure is cause for grave concern. Yet the thought of the coming meeting gives him far greater worry. Like a man who realizes it is no good postponing trouble, he lets himself out through a small door into a cool and biting courtyard. Wisteria vines climb and twist themselves around arches. The mauve blossoms hang in their grape-like bunches. The scent of the flowers mingles with the perfume waters of the fountain, which plays to cool the hot breath of coming night. The atmosphere of the courtyard is languid peace. But all the beauty and peace is lost on Don Pietro as his steps echo on the marble pavement. 
His eyes are on the figure sitting on the stone seat looking at the well-fed goldfish in the fountain pond. And the closer he gets, the greater his trepidation. How to tell her? Heaven help me. How to tell her? The girl by the fish pond looks up. The falling dusk gives her an added beauty, emphasizing the whiteness of her skin. The softness of her arms and shoulders gives luster to her raven hair, and jet black eyes gives a deeper hue to her passionate red manner. A frown crosses her forehead. A new light enters her eyes. Something has gone wrong. I know that expression of his. He doesn't know how to tell me. She waits until he comes up close. And as he fidgets with the cravat at his neck, then with a curl of his wig, she sits waiting for him to speak first. Then can bear his agitation no longer. Wait, Father. Something is worrying you. I know. Tell me what it is. Dolores, I, I do not know how to tell you. But remember, please, do not lose your temper. I have had bad news. I could not stand a scene. What is it? What has gone wrong now? Cortez has just left me. Cortez? How can he be in Cuba? He is captain of the treasure ship on his way to Spain. He was the captain, but he fell into the hands of Henry Morgan. The English pirate. He took the treasure. Our treasure. Dolores, please do not lose your temper. I cannot stand it. Yes, a storm scattered the Spanish ships. Morgan took Cote's ship with the greatest of ease. Our treasure gone. That doesn't matter so much. We can get more gold from the mainland. But don't you realize the Aztec necklace was on that ship? My necklace. What more than money can they tell? Oh, Dolores, please. I, I will make it up to you. I, I will obtain for yourself a, a whole shipload of gold. Gold? I don't want the gold. It is the Aztec necklace I want. And I shall have it back. I shall get it. I swear by heaven that no fat English senora will wear the Aztec necklace which belongs to Dolores Pizarro. So two oaths are taken on this balmy tropical night. And because of them, our tale is spun. The spirit of night encloses the Caribbean in a cloak of black spangled with large dancing stars. And as she speeds across the sky, the edge of her cloak lifts in the east showing a grey promise of a new day, which warns the sun it is time for work. Like a man disturbed from a heavy sleep, he climbs into the heavens, angry and red, casting vengeful rays over the ocean, reaching out to alight on the topmost peak of a sail, and down the snow-white canvas, until they embrace the hull, making the ship as though of gold. Early as it is, the ship is alive with movement, for land is ahead. On the poop, with one hand resting on the rail, stands Captain Henry Morgan, thick-set, handsome, burly. Beside him, kneeling at an open chest, is a swarthy young man, handsome in a sinister sly way. His dark eyes are alight with greed as he looks into the open chest. His tongue slowly moistens his lips as he looks upon the treasure. I take your fill, the arts. That's your payment for your treachery to your countrymen. <laughs> you are generous, Captain Morgan, in giving me this loot as my share. You served me well. I reward well those who serve me. Diamonds, rubies, gold pieces. <laughs> it will make my stay in Port Royal a happy one, Captain. You'll be a welcome visitor in the Dolphin Tavern. Kitty the Buccaneers, Bella will be glad to see you, laden down with that loot. There'll be necklaces to hang around her nice neck. Ah, Captain Morgan, and look at this one. I shall hang it around her neck. By St. David, hand it to me. No, it's just mine. Give it here. Aye, it is beautiful. Gold so finely beaten it looks like lace. Emeralds and rubies of the finest quality. It's too fine a thing to have scum like you waste upon a wanton's neck. It'll be better in my own pocket, it will. You'll give it back to me. It is mine. You gave me this chest and all the... In it. Give me my necklace back. What's this, you renegade Spanish rat? Insubordination? You're sailing under Henry Morgan, and Henry Morgan takes what he wants. But that necklace, it is mine. Give it to me. I'll give you this, you Spanish dog, in exchange. Yeah. Now, get you about your business. The wind is falling. We'll not make Port Royal by tonight. See that every strip of canvas is spread to catch the failing wind. Henry Morgan's fear of the failing wind proves correct. Soon it dies away until it is just a faint whisper. The sun beats down on the boiling sea and the gallant ship barely moves towards that smudge in the horizon which is Jamaica. The tantalizing nearness of the land and the baking sun makes tempers edgy and crafty 
signs treacherous. Listen to me, you two men. Morgan gives us the crumbs and keeps everything for himself. And two pairs of shifty eyes look on Diaz as he talks. Enough loot was taken on the trip to keep us in luxury for the rest of our lives. But Morgan seeks to keep it all. Two heads not in agreement. And so a plot is born. We won't reach Port Royal until late tonight. Morgan will leave the ship to visit the governor. Why not you two wait for him? A quick dagger thrust in the neck and we all share his shiploid of gold. Greed makes the other two fall in with the plan and blinds their eyes to the fact that they do it while Diaz has no hand in it. Diaz is right. It is late when Port Royal is reached and the town is wrapped in darkness. Before long, Captain Henry Morgan leaves the ship and goes along the dirty laneways near the docks. Figures lurk suspiciously in darkened doorways. Filth litters the ground at his feet. Two pairs of eyes watch out from under an archway, see him come closer, and then spring forward. The sudden city attack throws Morgan to the ground. A knife flashes in the night. You scum! You seek to take my life, do you? As if from nowhere, a third figure lurches into the fray. A second knife flashes once, twice. And two figures lie dead amongst the filth. Morgan has helped to his feet. I thank you. You saved my life. I never did like two against one. Who is it I have to thank? I know you're not. You know me not. It isn't wise in Jamaica to ask questions of a stranger. I have done you a favor this night. Now do me one. Seek not to question who I am. A strange meeting on a dark night. The beginning of an adventure tale. Don't miss the next exciting episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Mm -hmm.